Welcome back to DouglasCountyDigest.com. We are ending the fourth quarter here where the visiting team, the Sangamon Valley Storm, are up on the home team, Villa Grove Blue Devils, 13 to six. It's third and nine, Sangamon Valley. Hutchins takes the snap, he's looking to throw. Not a lot of people there, throws down the sideline incomplete. So it'll be fourth and nine now for the Storm. And there's some haulers for intentional grounding, but it's only intentional grounding when he throws into the ground when he's inside the pocket. And he was definitely way outside the pocket. Royce today, number 22, their running back is averaging 5.8, and their quarterback, Miles Hutchins, is averaging uh, an even five on his runs. So pretty good efforts from both of those guys on the ground. Royce in motion. Hutchins rolls to his left to pass. And there's the flag there. And it looked like the pass was caught, but it will be negated. I believe there's a holding penalty back here. Pass no, incomplete. pass is incomplete is the ruling on the field. But either way, that pass would have not been counted. Penalty on the play. Yeah, it was holding on Sangamon Valley. The penalty was declined. So Villa Grove will take over first and 10 from the, their 28 yard line with 11.43 to go here in the fourth quarter. And uh, they will get some opportunities here to hopefully get in the end zone and tie this up at least. And Villa Grove changing some things up now. They've got two wide outs to the far side, one to our side. Gunner takes the snap, rolls out to his right, throws, and Guerrero drops the ball. It's kind of a wobbly pass. Not a very tight spiral. Tough for Guerrero to hold on to. It's good to see them go with a the pass, though. They've had a very one-dimensional offense, keeping everybody packed in close. Nobody outside the hash marks, really, at all. But it uh, seems like they're changing it up a little bit, uh, maybe just to get some different looks for the Sangamon Valley defense to uh, try to adjust to. And a pitch out to the Max Daly number six, and that goes for a loss of about three. Daly on the so not only do they lose yards, but the clock continues to tick again. Yeah, really not sure at all at this point why they're running it outside. Um, four of the five times they've done that have been for a loss, and uh, so if I were the coach, I'd certainly not call those plays anymore out to the outside, but just kind of uh, inside runs and passes. Gunner takes the snap. The guy who's going to get the ball to fell down, but he does gain a few, get some of that back. It'll be fourth down and long, and uh, just some some bad turn of the events right now for Villa Grove. Have a couple guys slipping in the backfield. Um, I don't know at that point if I would have gone with the run, but that's how it is, and Villa Grove will send on their punt unit. That is why I'm not the coach, and I'm in the press box right now watching the game in warmth, mind you. It's very nice being in this press box and not having to deal with the breezy cold wind out there. It's about 45 degrees outside. It is sunny, and you can see right there how the ball kind of sinks. The ball kind of sinks, and right now they're, they're saying the ball hit the returner in the head, and it's a turnover. I was under the impression you had to give him a yard in order to catch the ball, and there was definitely not a yard in there for him to catch the ball. So Villa Grove gets, gets the turnover. I'm still kind of questioning that call because he didn't have a lot of space to catch that ball. So first and 10 for Villa Grove in storm territory. And there's a handoff to number 20, Bradley. And he gets around five yards, just about five yards. It'll be second and five here for Villa Grove. Good run. By number 20, Bradley. That is Nathan Bradley. 
and a little life for Villa Grove after that turnover. Two wide outs to our side of the field, one to the far side for Gunter. He takes a snap, rolls to his left, looks to the sideline, throws. It's caught by number 14, Dalton Mannon. And that is enough for the first down. First and 10 for Villa Grove. And they're on the move here. In the fourth quarter, nine and a half minutes on the scoreboard. Still, they are down by seven points, 13 to six. There's a snap, a throw, and he'll gain two, one, gain one, second and nine. It was kind of a risky pass out to the flats to Menon. It is completed for a one yard gain. They bring everybody back in. Two tight ends, one wide out to the left side of the, our side of the field. And there's a handoff to Bradley again. He's got some room up the middle. And he makes the most of that one for about a five yard gain. So it'll be third and four for the Blue Devils. On a very important possession right here. And number two, Zach Broker comes into the game. And waiting on the play here is Gunter. And he gives the signal. Gunter rolls to his left. Who does he have? Lobs it up and it is caught by number 20, Nathan Bradley on the sideline. And that is a first down for Villa Grove. And as we said, they're starting to throw a little diversity in there, going some short intermediate passes mixed in with the runs. And Villa Grove is now in scoring position from the 15 yard line in the red zone. Two wide outs, one to either side of the field, a back right behind Gunter. And I believe that's going to be an illegal motion play on Villa Grove. And a good gain by Gunter, but yeah, that one will come back. Two men moving in the backfield for Villa Grove. So that one will hurt Villa Grove just a little bit here. Move them back. Start over again. So it'll be first and 15 for Villa Grove from the 20 yard line. Split wide out to either side of the field for number 13, Gavin Gunter. Daly to his right, number six. Snap looks to throw. Throws too low, incomplete to number 14, Dalton Manning. There's no way he's going to get to that one. And going to no huddle again is Villa Grove. They've done, they've done pretty decent with the no huddle. Yeah, I'd like to see Villa Grove test the end zone. They haven't done that with any of their pass plays. Maybe just a little uh, stop and go with the receiver or something like that to get them down the field. But again, they've got a long second down here. And Gunter keeps it himself. And the ball came loose. I believe it was stripped by the storm. And I could not see who got it. I saw the ball come out. And we're waiting to clear up the pile here. The Storm seem to think that they have the ball, but there has been no signal from any of the referees, and there it is. The Storm recovered the fumble, and I believe that's number 48, Garrick Myers, coming up with that fumble. So the Storm, the storm stand up and strip the ball. Villa Grove's defense has to shore it up and force another three and out here or turnover with 7.52 left to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Villa Grove was so close there to tying up the game. They got down to the red zone and then just gave up the football. Penalty killed them and then a turnover. And Hutchins hands off to number 48, Garrick Myers with a huge gain for a first down, about 11 yards on that run. 
finally got his legs cut out from under him at the end of that play. Myers is uh, five carries for 30 yards on the day, uh, six yard average, very, very good for him. And the Storm will probably try and use as much of this clock as possible. But as long as they keep picking up first downs, that's all they have to do. Miles Hutchins, number 12 under center, sends a man in motion, hands off again to Garrick Myers, number 48, Myers for a six yard gain. By 72, Spencer Eversole. Second and four for the Storm. Some scores um, around this area. We saw Bismarck Henning play Villa Grove earlier. They beat Oakland 42 to nothing. That game's final. Arcole is up 33 to seven. Currently over Astoria. Um, no score listed for the Arthur Leroy game. Last time we heard Leroy was winning that game, and Moroa Forsyth uh, is up 48 to 21 over their opponent. And here in Villa Grove, 13 to six, Sangamon Valley's winning. Another handoff up the middle to Garrett Myers. And it'll be a, a third and two for the Storm. And this would be the point where Villa Grove has to draw the line. They need to get a stop here in order to have some decent time after the punt march back down the field. So third and two for the Storm. Garrick Myers, number 48, is behind. Miles Hutchins, number 12, the QB. And Hutchins goes out to his left and he keeps it. And it's gonna be close. They tackle him out right by the marker. But I'm... It's close. It looked to me like he was just a little bit short of that first down, but I'd imagine that Sigmon Billy will go for it if they are short because of how close it was. They should be able just to measure it from over there. Surely. So they're going to call him fourth and an eighth of an inch. Fourth and inches for the storm. So fourth and a toenail for them to uh, to get that. I, yeah, I would expect them to go up the middle either. Have Hutchins keep the ball or just give it to the big guy. And there it is. He's got the first down right there. Just his momentum crossing the line. Hutchins on the keeper. So first and ten. For the storm. First and ten for Sangamon Valley. Wow. And the clock continues to tick away here after the fl the uh, chain crew gets set. Yeah, their quarterback, uh, Sangamon Valley, Miles Hutchins, is now their leading ball carrier as well. 14 carries for 62 yards is what I have. Um, so decent day on the ground for him. Interesting to see the quarterback uh, be one of the leading uh, ball ball handlers for this team. Wyatt Royce goes in motion. He gets the ball going to the left side. And I believe he got pushed out of bounds. Wyatt Royce on the carry. Stop by number five, Tyler Price. We'll stop the clock with 5.22 to go in the fourth quarter. The ball is on the 46-yard line of the Storm. And again, I wouldn't see, I wouldn't expect to see anything but runs from Storm from here on out. You got a seven-point lead. You got Villa Grove backed up on their heels right now. And just give it to your big fullback back there, 48, Garrick Myers, Hutchins. A lot of Blue Devils in the backfield. Good job by Villa Grove. Got back in there before that he could even hand the ball off. So it'll be a loss of one. Now th third and six. It'll be a third and eight. Loss of one on that play. Breaks up man. And Villa Grove needs to stop here. We'll see what their defense can pull out. And you gotta be expecting a run, but you don't wanna be totally committed to it. Just in case. And 
Hutchins under center sends a man in motion. Royce with the counter handoff. He's got a lot of room. He's going to beat the defense up the middle. Huge game by 22 Wyatt Royce for the storm. And that is a huge breath of life for them. The clock will continue to tick. And they are in Villa Grove territory on the 23 yard line, almost to the red zone within scoring distance. And they could seal the game with another score here. And huge kick in the gut there by uh, Sangamon Valley to Villa Grove. Villa Grove uh, just barely in this game, and now they're uh, almost in the red zone at about the 23 yard line looking to score. And a handoff up the middle. That is Myers again. Short gain. Two yard gain for Myers. Number 48. Eversoll on the tackle for Villa Grove. He is number 72. And now's the time for Villa Grove. You want to stand that ball carrier up and now try and strip him. You want to do whatever you can to create a turnover right here. I mean, you don't want him to just run away, but if you can stand him up, stand him up so somebody else can come in and try and rip the ball out. You can still get a four and out. Hand off a counter again to Royce, and he has got the speedy feet. He is right up next to the first down marker, so it'll be third and short for the Storm. Coming up on three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Eight to six on the play. Yeah, yeah uh, it's amazing that this Villa Grove offense, they've, or they've only had five penalties on the day and one fumble, but they've managed to only put up six points uh, on the board. Um, just a lot of one-dimensional running offense that's been easy for Sangamon Valley to stop all day today. And a handoff up the middle again, and he's brought down quickly. So a loss, it'll be fourth and three for Sangamon Valley. Still two and a half minutes to go. Sangamon Valley will take their time getting up to the line. Let some of this clock run out. Yeah, this is, this is do or die right here for Villa Grove. They have to have the stop. Sangamon Valley gets this first down. This game is pretty much toast for them. Hutchins, number 12, under center. Royce in motion. They hand off to Royce. He goes to the left side. He's got some room. He's got the first down. There's a flag on the play, though. Royce is into the end zone. Flag on the far side of the field. Could possibly be a holding call. Villa Grove may get another chance at this, and it is holding. So Villa Grove will get a second opportunity here with two minutes to go. They have to have the stop. I mean, this has to be a stop for Villa Grove. If Sangamon Valley gets the first down, you can probably say this game is done. They, it is about fourth and five. Fourth and six. Fourth down and six for the storm after the hold. Here's here's the ball game right here. A lot of hard work. There haven't been any points put up in this second half by either team. Everything came in the first half. So the defenses have been battling it out so far. 12 Hutchins under center, two wide outs. Royce goes in motion, fake to Royce. Rolls to his right. He's got a lot of field. And he runs out of bounds. It looks like he's going to have the first down. First down for Sangamon Valley. He got pushed out of bounds, but at this point, I don't think it really matters. A minute 54 to go. They can basically just take a knee and let the clock run. Villa Grove has two timeouts left, I believe. So they could delay it quite a bit if they can get some stops, but. Number 75 for Sangamon Valley, Gavin uh, Hawkins, the sophomore, has been very important for them on the offensive line. Uh, he just got a key block for them. And I believe that was, Gar um, excuse me, Garrick Myers, number 48, run up the middle. 
Five yard gain. A second and four. And Billy Grove's hopes for this one are slowly taking away at this point. And Garrett, excuse me, Miles Hutchins, number 12, under center, two wideouts. Back straight back behind him. Royce goes in motion. They counter to Royce. Gets to the left side. He doesn't have anywhere to go. He got plastered. And Billy Grove takes timeout with just over a minute to go. So it'll be third and four. For the storm. And again, Villagrove has to make a stand to get a stop. Two downs, third and fourth down. They have to get a stop both times and then go the length of the field for a score. In a minute and four, 13 to six in favor of the storm. Visiting team in white. Again, both these teams have had pretty good seasons this year. Again, Villa Grove was a 7-2. And, two. and Sangamon Valley Check it out. was 6-3. and three. What's with uh, All their losses. Villa Grove took a couple of hard hits, maybe against a couple teams that she, they should have played closer or uh, gotten wins on, but came up short. And uh, now they, are, they have their backs against the wall against Sangamon Valley here in Villa Grove. First round of the playoffs. Both teams come out to the line here, ready to go. Same formation for Sangamon Valley. Two wide outs either side of the field. Wide side to the right side, they have more space. Hutchins under center, number 12. Man in motion, handoff up the middle. I don't think He's going to get close. And it'll be fourth and fourth and four, so no gain on the play. And Billy Grove takes their final timeout. So fourth and five. Under a minute to go, 57 seconds. And I would probably go with the blitz here to try and keep them from getting this. You have to take a risk, play one-on-one -on -one with your safeties and your corners. Everybody else has to sell out to the ball. Because you don't want Hutchins to scramble. If they do pass, you don't want Hutchins scrambling and then taking off and getting the first down with his legs. They've done that a couple of times where secondary and their linebacking core haven't come up as quickly as they should have. And Hutchins has gotten first downs and extra yards here late in the fourth. Yeah, only one fumble for Villa Grove um, and five penalties, which both are uh, far below their season average, but still just haven't been able to put themselves in this game uh, score-wise with uh, Sangamon Valley. Sangamon Valley has a fumble and an interception and five penalties. Hutchins keeps it, and he's not going to get the first down, I don't think. I believe he is short, and it's going to be Villagrove's ball, I do believe. Yep, first down Villagrove with 50 seconds. They have 50 seconds to go, no timeouts. And they have to go the entire length of the field in order to even the odds here. They're, they're going to need a lot of passes, and their wide receivers are going to have to get uh, out of bounds. I don't think they can afford any sort of inside run and outside runs have pretty much all been uh, for losses. So it looks like we're going to see a lot of passing here for Villa Grove. If you're going to throw short, it has to be to the sideline to get them out of bounds. Throw over the middle, and that is Bradley, number 22, 20. Nathan Bradley is complete for about 15, 20 yards, and they have to hurry up. Clock stops for the chain gang to move. And first down for Villa Grove. And now the clock continues again. There's a snap. Gunter throws across the middle again. This time to number one, Toby Stipp. Complete to number one, Toby Stipp. 
Tony Smith. And stop by 28, Wyatt Beals. That was enough for the first down. So the chains first will move. 34 left. seconds to go. And they have to wait for chains to set up. He basically snap it as fast as you can. No, he's got a scramble. It throws across the middle. Again, it's picked off. Bad throw, number 15. That is Jimmy Staub with the pick. And the storm with the interception to clinch this game. And Villa Grove will go down hard here at home in the first round of the playoffs. Still 21 seconds on the board, but the storm are probably just going to take a knee and end this game. And uh, that's kind of a heartbreaker for Villa Grove. And a good season. Tough to tough to deal with. Uh, unfortunate for Gavin Gunter, number 13, the quarterback, had a had a decent game and uh, just a, a little bit underthrown. And we'll see the storm take a knee, and that will be the end of the ball game. So. Here in Villa Grove, first round of the playoffs, Villa Grove Blue Devils fall hard. Final score is 13 to 6 in favor of Sangamon Valley Storm. Thank you for joining us on the DouglasCountyDigest.com.